This is Montgomery Mosaic on 1450 WOL, WPRS, HD2, and worldwide on WOLDCnews.com. Montgomery Mosaic features topics of interest to Montgomery County residents, businesses, and visitors. Here now is your host, Deborah Milo. Good morning, Montgomery County. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Montgomery Mosaic. I hope you're having a positive day in spite of the cold weather because you know it is cold. Today I'm happy to have as my guest Tim Warner, Chief Engagement and Partnership Officer for Montgomery County Public Schools. As the school's chief engagement officer, Tim is responsible for leading the initiative to transform community engagement and to empower student achievement. Let me give you a little bit about Tim's background. He spent five years as the community liaison for the African American and faith communities in the County Executive's Office of Community Partnerships. His visionary work on the Neighborhood Opportunity Network, an organization which links county residents most affected by the Great Recession with emergency services, earned Tim the National Association of Counties Achievement Award, also known as NACO. Prior to Tim's work with the county, he served as Associate Council Director for Community and Economic Development in the Baltimore-Washington Conference of the United Methodist Church and as Senior Pastor of St. Mark's United Methodist Church in Boyd's, Maryland for five years. Now here's the interesting part, and this is where I'm going to tease Tim a little bit. He originally trained as a bacterial geneticist. Tim, welcome to Montgomery Mosaic. It really is a pleasure to meet you and have you here. Now, look, what's this business about you trained as a bacterial geneticist? <laughs> uh, thank you very much for having me, Deborah. Um, it really was business. Um, I, I left uh, college wanting to win a Nobel Peace Prize in, in research and um, started working in a pharmaceutical firm uh, doing uh, genetics and bacteria uh, to the end of uh, discovering new pharmaceuticals for, uh, to be developed in the United States. Wow. Okay. See, now, when I think of anybody with that kind of magnitude of brain, that's <clears throat> that's just huge. That's quite a tough discipline, to say the least. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, prior to you coming to the school system, in your current position, you spent five years with Montgomery County government as the county executive's African-American and faith communities liaison. Kind of talk about that and talk about what you were able to accomplish in that position and actually what inspired you to transition your career to focus on student engagement and achievement. People often have um, questions about, about how I made the, the leap from science to, um, to, to, to community engagement. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and what, what was central for me in that was uh, what I experienced as a call to, to, to ministry uh, in, in the church. Right. And the ministry to which God has called me has been a, a ministry of community development as well as pastoral ministry. Okay. So um, community has been uh, very important for me over time. As I look back over my own life, um, I'm a, the son of a single mother. And um, I think I'm certain now that, that I've made it to where I am largely because of all the great many people in the community who uh, work together uh, passively and some very, very intentionally to make sure that I got what I needed. And so it's not an accident that uh, community is such a high value to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, the work um, that I do is is sending me back to the communities like the ones from which I came, where I know that there are uh, students that are full of potential, uh, that, that need somebody to help direct their path and to, to make some systems uh, and put them in place to, to in, ensure that we've got equitable systems that where they can attain the education that, that is promised to them by our government. Mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about, uh, you said that you were uh, raised by a single, by single mother. Right? Yes, I was. Okay, then. Talk a little bit about that part of the inspiration that helped you to make the decision to serve the population. So part of it for me is um, <clears throat> what I see in schools now sometimes when I go, because there are uh, um, often students in school who come from single-parent households. And there are things that surround uh, those students in particular, like uh, poverty and uh, mm-hmm. uh, disconnectedness with, with school and with systems that, that help keep families together. And uh, as I go to schools and I, I, I see those students, I know that they, too, have the potential to do great things. Uh, the other thing I know is that, uh, like my mother, their parents have great aspirations for them. Uh, every single parent has hopes and dreams and aspirations for their child. 
uh, regardless of their socioeconomic background, regardless of, uh, of their race, regardless of their language, regardless of their immigration status, mm-hmm. and uh, are really the primary uh, uh, partners with school to uh, be funds of information about their children. And, 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 and we need to, to, to reach out and engage them to the best extent possible to uh, make sure that we are accessing all that parents bring uh, mm-hmm. to their child's education. So uh, my heart goes first to the work, uh, and, and my work in community organizing helps us to, to reach community in a, in, in a deeper way. I know that you're really busy within the community, in the school community. Do you have an opportunity to actually do a lot of volunteerism still, or is your time so compressed? <laughs> <laughs> well, the compression of time. Someone should write a book about it at some right. point. Right. Um, I, I do some volunteer work still uh, as much as I can. Um, mm-hmm. I'm currently the pastor of a church in addition to this. Oh, so you um, are currently pastor. Wow. Still. Oh, um, my goodness. And, and so, so that's that's part of it. There's fortunately a, a really excellent um, uh, assistant pastor there who helps with that work. Mm-hmm. But I'm also on uh, the boards of a couple of nonprofits in, in the county that uh, uh, provide opportunities for uh, the communities that, 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 that I try to support. So I'm, I'm busy. So basically, we should look out for your book about time management, right? (laughs) (laughs) Or come to my funeral, one or the other. Oh, no, 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 no. County listeners, you've tuned into Montgomery Mosaic with your host, Deborah Milo. And I'm talking to Tim Warner, Chief Engagement and Partnership Officer for Montgomery County Public School System. Coming to the school system gave you an opportunity to lead the initiative to transform community engagement to empower student achievement. Now, you know, this is a subject matter that a lot of folks don't want to talk about, which is that achievement gap. But the fact of the matter is, it does exist. How do you feel about accomplishments in closing the achievement gap? So the, the short answer is that there's so much to do, and we still haven't done enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, the longer answer is this. The achievement gap is not a new problem. Uh, it has been for the last 30 or 40 years in existence, and people of uh, – goodwill and uh, high intellect and, and high commitment mm-hmm. have, from, from various sectors of our community in education and out uh, have, have tried uh, to solve it, but it is sufficiently complex that uh, there's no silver bullet to it. Uh, it, it. It relates to almost every historical uh, and socioeconomic factor uh, you can imagine. And at the heart of it, uh, around the, the discussion around equity, is the question of race. We, we really need to address it in, That's in, right. in some way. That's right. Um, having said all that, though, I think the uh, our school system, like many in the nation, um, understand that um, the gap will not be closed. It won't be eliminated uh, by just pedagogy. In other words, mm-hmm. we cannot teach our way right. out of the achievement gap, that there are other factors that have to be tended to. Uh, there are what we call social determinants of achievement mm-hmm. that uh, need to be addressed. And to the extent that the school system has a primary responsibility for education, we need to be taking the lead in uh, engaging community in such a way that we get by those determinants uh, to, to help students achieve the best they can. So do you feel as though that the achievements to close the gap, are they, are we on, are we on, I guess the word I'm looking for is, are we on board with it? Are we, is it within, are we doing what we need to do from what you can see? So, so we're doing some of what we need to do. We are nowhere near where we need to be. And I think people need to hear uh, us in the school system say that. Um, we have an excellent school system and have had for, for years. It is uh, a national model still right. uh, for how to do uh, public education excellently uh, at, at a large scale. There are 202 schools in, in, in the county. Uh, and people don't understand the complexity of, of running 202 schools. That scale by itself is, is, is something to, uh, to deal with. But the reality is that even though our grades for uh, our affected classes and our affected classes of, of folks are African Americans and Latinos and folks in special education uh, and and poor folks mm-hmm. um, primarily uh, are doing better than uh, every other large school district in the nation, um, we still have an expanding achievement gap in Montgomery County. And um, I never talk about how wonderful our schools are. Uh, unless I talk about uh, simultaneously the fact that uh, whether our, our gaps are, are smaller or better, our achievements are better than any other county, if my child is in the gap, it really doesn't matter. Right. It, uh, every parent wants the best opportunity for their children. And I think there's a greater issue with the achievement gap, and that is that um, the issue itself, uh, the way schools have been uh, um, uh, put in the middle of, of the dialogue around property value even in, mm. in our county, affects so many other things. Um, most of the um, county's budget goes to school. 
True. And so when there's that kind of an investment that there's a gap at all, points to some systemic inequity, and those kinds of things need to be fixed and eliminated. Hmm. So what are you doing to engage not only the community, but parents as well in the learning process? Because, you know, you and I both know we were most African-American uh, you know, families. We were all taught that learning begins at home. And, you know, learning and a student's success, as you well know, go hand in hand with the parental process. So what is it that you're doing to engage, like I said, the parents as well as the uh, as well in the learning process? So, so it's interesting you ask that question. I, I think an awful lot about this because uh, my mother was quite young when she had uh, my brother and I, mm-hmm. uh, literally a teenager. And mm-hmm. so we grew up together and I watched her uh, struggle with this issue. She was remarkable in so many ways in that while she worked uh, two or three jobs all the time trying to make sure that we had what we needed, uh, my mother always took the opportunity to get to school as much as she could. She wanted to be known in school, and she wanted the teachers to know Beautiful. Uh, that she was engaged because she didn't want us mistreated by them because she knew, because, partly because of the ethic in our community, that education was primary for us. Right. If we were not going to fall into the same hole that she had gotten herself in, uh, education was going to be the way out. What interests me further about that is <clears throat> my own theory about, um, if we can use the, the African-American community as an example, mm-hmm. of what has happened in the African-American context uh, in, in terms of community over the last years. So uh, to some extent, um, African-Americans in Montgomery County, perhaps across the nation, uh, are affected by the success of the civil rights movement in a negative way. So when civil rights happen, um, uh, uh, the, the community that once existed where uh, no matter what your level of, uh, of status was in that community, uh, everyone lived there together under the oppression of racism, under the oppression of, of some relative poverty, under the oppression of isolation. That's exactly uh, right. There are some ethics that developed in that community. Right. One is uh, everybody in this community is in the community together, and because I exist, you exist, and we can acknowledge one another. I can't imagine a time uh, in a community where I grew up where one black person would walk down the side of the street and another would walk down the other. Whether they had been introduced or not, right. they wouldn't stop to acknowledge their That's own right. humanity together. That's right. right. That, that always happened. The other ethic was that, listen, if we're ever going to make it out of here, education is the way to do that. Education was so, the way to do um, that. So what happened, the way I see it, in, after civil rights is that uh, everybody could live where they wanted to live and go to whatever school they wanted to go to and work wherever they wanted to work, and people actually did. And those ethics, when the community began to disperse, also began to disperse. So that um, the priority, uh, the sacrificial priority of education is no longer quite the same. Uh, What we do in our office is to try and reestablish that, literally reweave the fabric of community so that uh, uh, people can come together as partners with us, to be mutually accountable with us, regardless of their parental status or anything else about the family, uh, for, for, their, for the success of their children in education. Uh, it is, I think, uh, going to make the largest dis- difference systemically uh, in closing the gap. Uh, and I also think it's going to be the slowest, most difficult uh, work to do. The slowest, most difficult work to do. You know, that's daunting. It really, really is. Because like you, I can remember when, like you said, in our, com- in their, our communities, it was all about families. And it really, according to the African proverb, it really does take a village. It actually does take a village. If you've just tuned in, welcome to Montgomery Mosaic. I'm your host, Deborah Milo, and my guest today is Tim Warner with Montgomery County Public Schools, and we're talking about his role as Chief Engagement and Partnership Officer with the schools. Um, I saw on your website where you said that your office is building deeper relationships and connecting students to as many people who are invested in their learning as possible invested in their learning earlier we talked about how it's important for the community to be invested in learning um i want to talk a little bit about how you're going about achieving this worthy goal and we can just kind of briefly touch on that so let me tell you uh how we expect to do our work in the office of community engagement and partnerships and then perhaps uh, after break, we can get into some of the details of how we're doing it. Okay. But that, we, we so, are mm-hmm. uh, building capacity of school staff to reach families, and we're also building the capacity of parents uh, to reach school. And there, there are several factors in there that we can get into. Sounds good. This is Montgomery Mosaic on 1450 WOL. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment. 1450 WOL. 
Good morning. This WOL traffic update is brought to you by Robitussin. New York Avenue both ways. We have the road work again today at North Capitol Street with just one lane getting by each way. Accident, Beltway, Prince George's County, inner loop southbound at Route 4, Pennsylvania Avenue. It was two right lanes closed with delays approaching the accident scene right now. Robitussin, the number one pharmacist recommended brand for cough. Cold and flu combinations control your cough with Robitussin. Don't suffer the cough consequences used as directed. Now your WOL weather forecast brought to you by Arcadia Communities. For today, sunny high in the upper 30s, clear overnight down to 22. Tomorrow, cloudy in the morning, off and on rain showers after that. And a high near 41, doubled down with Arcadia Communities, two grand opening celebrations to get double the incentives when you buy a new home. Visit livingarcadia.com, equal housing opportunity. Right now in Washington, D.C., sunny in 29 degrees. Steve Hershorn for News Talk 1450 WOL, where information is power. We're back, Montgomery County. This is Deborah Milo on Montgomery Mosaic, and I'm glad that you're with us today. We're here and privileged to have Tim Warner. uh, He's the Chief Engagement and Partnership Officer with Montgomery County Public Schools, and we're talking about a really significant issue about the achievement gap. And Tim was sharing a little bit about us, about the uh, building deeper relationships to connect to the students and to talk about people who are invested in their learning as possible. Tim, can you kind of pick up where we left off before we went to the break and talk about how you're going about achieving this very worthy goal? Sure. So uh, first I want to talk about uh, how we make school relevant to uh, various sectors of our community. I I think of uh, schools as community assets and uh, a place where community uh, gathers and and, and builds. but I think we need to talk about the various sectors of our community and how they can contribute to school. Uh, the first of which is our, our business community. If Montgomery County Public Schools is sort of the uh, among the flagship brands of Montgomery County, mm-hmm. uh, then it means that everybody has to have a stake in education. Our students eventually are going to graduate and go on to secondary education and um, uh, hopefully come back to, to live and work in our county. And uh, if that's the case, we need to be turning out the best and the brightest to help our businesses achieve uh, their their goals. Um, And in turn, businesses uh, also have a responsibility to come to school to help that process happen. So we talk about internships uh, for for children and summer employment for children and Mm -hmm. uh, employees getting time off to come and teach uh, the science or the technology or the engineering or whatever the trade is that they know so that children can become interested and inspired and supported by people outside the school to make sure that it's a, a broader effort. Um, also, uh, businesses uh, provide uh, externships for teachers. So if you're a science teacher going to spend some time at a pharmaceutical company to learn more about a certain technology, right. will eventually make a teacher a more excellent teacher and a, certainly a more relevant teacher. Um, and, and businesses also provide us with uh, a, a, a good sum of money to, to, to help the process. One would think with a $2.4 billion budget that we don't need money, but most of that goes to staff, the 23,000 people who, who actually make the, make the thing go every day. Goodness. Uh, the gas for the million miles a day that the buses travel right, right. Uh, uh, goes, goes to that budget. Um, but, for instance, uh, another need that we have is to try and meet some of the physical needs with families and parents to help make school relevant for, for the adults. Uh, we run uh, a big fundraising campaign every year called uh, uh, MCPS Give Backpacks, where uh, we ask businesses to, to donate money to uh, the school so that we can put uh, backpacks filled with supplies in the hands of families at local school to help uh, their children start day one with the right kind of uh, supplies that they need. Wow. Um, we've also partnered with uh, – and so last year we raised um, uh, nearly a quarter of a million dollars to do that. Uh, but we have in Montgomery County um, over 50,000 students who are on free and reduced meals, which is our measure of poverty. Wait a second. Over 50,000 students. People are amazed by the fact that we have more students on free and reduced meals in Montgomery County than Washington, D.C. has in its entire and, school system. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and it's just a, a, a matter of scale. Uh, we have a million people and 154,000 students in our system. Right. We are at once a county of uh, still uh, great wealth. But uh, concurrent with that, and this is a growing and newer reality for us, mm-hmm. uh, a county that has uh, lots of poverty, and the poverty that we have is is pretty deeply entrenched. For instance, uh, of the 50,000 students that we have on free and reduced meals, 80% of them are getting free meals, 
which means that income is 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 very low. It's very very them. low. Yes. So um, one of the ways that we make school relevant for those adults, um, ma- many of the uh, trends around the achievement gap sort of run together. So mm-hmm. some of the most disengaged parents are also the the parents of students who are in our achievement gap. Of course. Um, and who are also some of our poorer uh, 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 parents. Um, the question for us is how do we make school relevant for them? And right. so we provide, for instance, if you are an immigrant, and we have an increasing number of immigrants coming to our county from Central America and we from do. Africa mostly, um, can, we, can we learn English at school, after school? Mm-hmm. So we are working with um, uh, Mikhail to, to, uh, through our Linkages to Learning program to make sure that we have uh, adequate sites around our county where parents can come and learn English at night. But a part of that also is a, a partnership that we have with the Capital Air Food Bank, mm-hmm. where we're actually having uh, free family markets at uh, eight of our schools uh, every month around the county, in some of our most challenged neighborhoods, where uh, literally tons of food uh, you know, descends on the school. We have volunteers, including students who need student service learning hours, come to unpack it uh, and really operate a free supermarket for parents to come and shop for healthy food. Wow. Uh, at that time, though, we gather them. Uh, we also uh, uh, have staff from school uh, to engage them about relevant issues for their children. Mm-hmm. These are parents that often uh, the teachers don't see or have difficulty contacting. We bring in partners around the county who provide services for them, and we also use that opportunity to um, make stronger contact so that we can further engage uh, those parents into what we are calling community engagement teams where we can really get at the issues around the community uh, and form a, a common narrative around equitable education in the community by those parents for the kids in those those particular schools. You know, this leads me to another qu- another thought that I had, actually. Do you find it to be extra challenging in the county since the county is so diverse? So um, th- there are so many challenges. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's um, They're almost too numerous to count. Um, our diversity is at once uh, our greatest challenge, uh, but I would also submit that it's our greatest strength. I agree. So we have um, more and more folks who come, um, some from, from other countries, who, who may be illiterate in their own language, mm-hmm. uh, not literate in English, uh, um, have immigration issues so that they cannot participate at the level we'd like uh, in our economic system. Uh, and, and, and culturally don't understand school quite the same way. So um, uh, when, when you are, come from a culture where school is a bit of a black box and you send your child to school right. and, the, and the school sends your child back educated um, and you're not used to interacting with, uh, uh, with, with school officials mm-hmm. and you show up in a great big system like, like Montgomery County and the PTA is after you and the, the, the principal's calling, please right. come to our PTA meeting, come to our back-to-school night, please come to school. Um, parents don't know what to do. Foreign-born people look at that differently. They very, look at it, I would assume, they look at it differently as though it's, it's something they want to avoid. Very, very, very differently. And, and at the end of the day, and this is an unfortunate circumstance, mm-hmm. uh, at the end of the day, schools uh, are, are government entities. True. And sometimes if uh, you have challenges in your immigration status, um, one is afraid to encounter uh, other school. Uh, our schools don't. Don't don't care about immigration status. We educate every child who who comes through our doors. Absolutely. But the the average person is not aware of that. Just just coming to the country, we also see issues with um, more issues more recently with students who are facing complex trauma because of their journey to the United States. Mm. Uh, uh, what does it take to get from uh, uh, Guatemala to the United States? Of course. Uh, and and I think people need to be aware of that journey. And what has happened to a child, particularly if they're not accompanied by an adult, um, uh, on the way? And then what is the reality, uh, the social reality of the child when the child gets here? Because family reunification is also a very complicated, uh, challenging issue. Mm-hmm. And, and associated with that are all the socioeconomic issues that you might expect. If you're a child who expected to be with mom or dad and That's mom and right. dad uh, no longer have the capacity to take you in. Uh, you are almost a ward of the state, and, and it becomes a very difficult thing. Mm-hmm. But school is the place where all these things converge, and our teachers and our staff um, have to receive accolades for dealing with just the complexity uh, and the messiness of it uh, every day in service of educating every child. They most certainly do. This is Montgomery Mosaic on 1450 WOL with your host, Deborah Milo, and I'm chatting with Tim Warner, Chief Engagement Officer with Montgomery County Public Schools. 
Tell us a little bit about the Parent Academy. <clears throat> Parent Academies are designed to um, gather groups of parents in their context. So we will come to local schools and to community organizations and to churches and faith communities, wherever parents are gathered, to uh, talk about a topic, uh, usually of their choice, but sometimes of ours, uh, that needs to be addressed. For instance, um, uh, you know, how, how do I deal with my, my teenager who no longer listens to me? Right. Well, I mean, you know, I can, oh, wow. That's a, that's, a, that's a subject a lot of us can actually talk about. Yeah, I, I needed that class myself. <laughs> uh, and, and, but, but, but sometimes they're more relevant. Uh, we, we are changing uh, the way we have, do our report cards and our curriculum and mm -hmm. how we're doing testing. All those things affect those of us who have capacity. Imagine what it means for somebody who doesn't have language and doesn't understand mm. Uh, the level of detail that has to be transmitted to those communities. So all that's done through our parent academies. We have a new uh, uh, code of conduct uh, in, uh, uh, regulation in, in, in uh, Montgomery County Public Schools. Mm -hmm. And how does that affect people at community uh, uh, that, that, that uh, may be affected by this? And how do they understand it? And do they understand the right information as deeply as they need to? So all of those things are, are topics that we cover in parent academies. Sometimes they work with uh, the George B. Thomas Learning Academy, which is mm -hmm. a Saturday school. Uh, we do those parent academies with parents. They, they would drop their children off, and we have parent academies concurrent with that. While they, their children are receiving academic support, we're talking to parents about how they can be supportive of the work as well. So we do as much as we can around the parent academies as possible. You know what? This is such an in-depth subject. You know, we're go I'm going to have to have you back. That's, <laughs> of course. That's just the way it is. I'm going to have to have you back. Before we wrap up, Tim, leave us with some inspiring words that can, we can share with our children to empower them to succeed. Well, I, I think I may have already said them, right? That we, we first need mm -hmm. to um, uh, understand the complexity of school mm -hmm. uh, and honor our teachers and our principals. They are uh, the hardest working people in Montgomery County. Not a single one of them has come uh, to education to, to get wealthy. They, they're, they're there because they care about kids. But the second thing is our attitude around the entire community has to be one of value of every single parent and respect of parents' desires and wishes and dreams for their children and uh, a concurrent expectation that every single child, uh, regardless of what they look like or where they come from, uh, can achieve great things in school. We have the capacity to do it. The only thing that is missing uh, sometimes is our will to get it done uh, in, in, the, in that moment. And that applies to school and to every sector of community as well. Well said. Well, Montgomery County, thanks again for tuning into Montgomery Mosaic. I'd like to thank my guest, Tim Warner, Chief Engagement and Partnership Officer with Montgomery County Schools. And of course, thank you, our wonderful listeners, for sharing a part of your day with us. Tune in again next month. And don't forget, we're on twice a month now, the second and fourth Wednesday of each month, for another Montgomery Mosaic on 1450 WOL, WPRS HD2, and worldwide on WOLDCnews.com. Till next time, make it a positive day.